Hey y'all, I'm Brooke Hoover, a Louisiana native, actor, writer, and comedian. I've lost 100 pounds through diet and exercise, or shall I say, lifestyle changes. My 20 year and counting health journey has taught me that just like taking a diet pill for weight loss, body positivity doesn't magically happen overnight. I'm working on regaining my self-esteem and rekindling my love affair with Cajun and Southern comfort food in a healthier way, all the while juggling eating as clean as I can, reestablishing myself in the entertainment industry, which, as we know, is historically fat-phobic, all the while showing my inner fat girl some love. That's fat with a PH. Pretty hot and tempting. Let me tell y'all a tale or two. Hey, y'all, it is Brooke, and thank you for listening to the Who's Dat Fat Girl podcast. And today's episode is called Never Gonna Give You Up, and that is obviously uh, in honor of my main man. I mean, he's not really my main man. He doesn't know I exist yet. Rick Astley. Rick Astley. I just said Rick Astley. Rick Astley. That was a bad vocal usage. So Rick Astley, his song was topping the charts back in 1988, which was the year of my genie costume. And it feels like in the past couple years, maybe like four years ago or so, not even, and definitely in Ted Lasso of season two, the song Never Gonna Give You Up, and Rick Astley, Astley, for the love of God, Brooke, it... It makes a comeback. And I'm going to say something right now. I was using that song in my solo show, Fat Girl Costumes, which inspired this podcast well before that. So anyways, I, I'd i like to say I made Rick Astley popular again. I probably didn't. But today, this podcast has nothing to do with Rick Astley, honestly, because we're talking about food. We're talking about foods that I will never give up and foods that I definitely will give up. So weight loss aside, there's certain foods that I personally have given up for health purposes, and the weight loss was a side effect. And yes, the the weight loss is always looming over my head. I mean, for God's sakes, you know, I was always overweight for more than half of my life. So Yes, I want to give up certain foods to lose weight, but it also became a thing of I associate certain foods with mental clarity, which I need to sniff my rosemary oil right now because I'm already getting a little ADD. But see, I just had like I had gluten today. Okay, so for example, I had a bagel, a pumpernickel bagel with tofu cream cheese spread today. See, I I can't do dairy and gluten in the same day or I won't be able to function. But if I have too much of one thing that makes me feel or act weird, it's no good. So here we go. Certain foods that I will give up include regular hot coffee. Just buy, girl, buy. Most of the times, especially when I am getting the hot coffee out, it's not good. It's not strong. It tastes like canal water. So it's like, what's the point? I make it at home much better because I like it stronger. I like it like I like my man. Nice and strong. I think that was really anti-feminist of me to just say that. Something else I gave up, something else I gave up right away that helped me lose weight, but also helped my body process everything better was added sugar. So with the added sugar that's giving up a lot of different things, which include obviously soda. So I I can't tell you the last time I had Coke or even Diet Coke. I don't, I don't drink that stuff. I do drink seltzer. All my friends know that I'm a big seltzer person, but I even have to be careful with seltzer. We'll get to that in a moment, but soda, soda, buy, girl, buy. Also juice, not like green juice, because I do love green juice that just tastes like a bunch of grass that you have put together in a drinkable format. But juices like apple juice, orange juice. I mean, my boyfriend Harry drinks orange juice, but like with pepper and salt, that's his thing. Every so often I crave like fresh squeezed grapefruit juice, but no thanks. I would just rather eat the grapefruit. Because oftentimes with me with juice, I realized like apple cider, love apple cider, but I only allow myself to have it maybe once a year in the fall time. 
because again, too much sugar offsets my hormones. And we all know I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So it's like, what would I rather, you know, feel like a crazy person or have, you know, 25 apples juiced at once in a glass for me? So would you eat 25 apples at a time? I doubt it. Just eat one apple, get on with it, or don't eat the apple and have a little shot of apple cider. I don't know. Uh, something else I gave up right away, and I must say I'm not Italian, so it was easy for me, is rice. Uh, sorry, is pasta. I gave up pasta like, bye girl. And one thing I used to love more than anything, I wonder if they still make it at Chili's, was like the Cajun chicken pasta. And they call it Cajun chicken because the spices, I guess they just use Tony's or or their version of Tony's Sacheries. It was so good, but it was like this Alfredo I don't even care about the amount of calories or carbs it had. Just all that white pasta it just sits in your gut. And by your gut, I mean mine. And it just festers and does crazy things to me. So buy girl with the pasta. I can't even tell you the last time I had regular pasta because usually I'll just do zucchini noodles. Um, zoodles, which is such a BS term in my humble opinion. Or I'll do like um, chickpea pasta or things like that. I also gave up white rice. So while pasta might be something hard for my Italian friends to give up, rice, especially white rice, is something hard for my Cajun folk and many other friends around the world and other cultures to give up. I gave up white rice. I'm like, I don't need it. I'd rather the stuff that goes with the white rice more. You know, I'd rather the etouffee or the beans. And if I really want the texture of rice, I'll do a little bit of brown rice, which definitely is not the same. Um, I can't even cook it. Usually my mama cooks it because she can cu cook a mean cup of brown rice. And if you don't believe me, just ask my dogs, Annie and Archer. Yeah, she makes a great cup of brown rice. Seriously, brown rice is not easy to cook. Something else I gave up pretty easily, sandwiches, wraps, uh, burgers with the bun, because I'm like, again, what I want is the stuff inside. But also on the note of sandwiches, etc., deli meats. Deli meats have got a lot of added sodium nitrates, nitrites, something like that, just not good stuff. Gave them up. Candy bars. Gave up candy bars because we'll get to it. I substitute candy bars with something. And no, y'all, it's not mushed up dates because dates got a lot of sugar too. And let's see, the comfort, comfort, you see, I have to always work on that. The comfort foods that I've given up, um, crawfish, but I never really liked crawfish anyways. Everybody back home in Louisiana probably wants to kill me right now, but at least I didn't call them crayfish. God, do not call crawfish crayfish. They're crawfish. Gave them up easily. Um, just super salty and there's a lot of poop in them. Um, I can easily say I gave up king cake, beignets, po' boys, mufaladas. I'll see all the bread-based goodnesses, but that's only because I can't get a good one up here in the New York, New Jersey area. Well, we know king cake, you know, I have a whole other episode about that where I did get a good one at Whole Foods, but was it good enough to eat all the time? No. And king cake, you can't even get all the time anyways. Needless to say, even if I lived back home, I don't think I would eat beignets once a day. Definitely not. I wouldn't even eat them once a week. It's again, it's just too heavy. And beignets are also fried, which brings me back to another thing. I'm not a big fried food person, never was. So quote unquote, giving up fried foods wasn't a hard thing for me. Something else I gave up was chicken and dumplings. Ew. But I mean, I gave that up because I never really liked them anyways. Fooled you. Fooled myself. What am I talking about? Feeling very ADD today. It really must be that pumpernickel bagel. Yes. So speaking of fried foods, there are things I won't give up. I love French fries. I'm not going to lie. I love French fries. And when I went paleo, I'm like, hey, they're potatoes, mm. but you're not really supposed to, quote unquote, supposed to eat potatoes, but sweet potato fries. Mm. I really just love French fries. The other day I was at a place, actually, Harry and I were celebrating our 11 year anniversary and we went out for breakfast. <laughs> we had burgers without the bun and fries for breakfast at Buddy's in Jersey City because we are crazy people and we want to eat lunch food for breakfast. Their fries were so good. They were like hand cut. You could tell they were the real deal. I don't eat frozen fries or anything like that. Um, there's 
fries like like from Wendy's I feel like Wendy's has the best fast food fries I could talk about french fries all day because I just love them pomme frites as my french friends would say but I easily gave up ketchup when I found out that ketchup had added sugar in it no thank you and besides ketchup reminds me of blood and ketchup I also have a bad association with because one time my mom I was riding on mama's lap and on a riding lawnmower my dad was pushing the push lawnmower uh, lawnmower and a stick went from my dad's lawnmower to my mom's and hit her on the chin and made her bleed something fierce and this was stupid because I was right by her so it missed my temple my eye temple by not my temple like my sanctuary my it missed my eye temple by like millimeters so needless to say they have some neighbors babysit us babysit us babysit me babysit us I guess me and my multiple personalities and they my mom and my dad rush off to the hospital and our friends are like Brooke do you want a grilled cheese I'm like yeah I'll take a grilled cheese and all of a sudden I see them whip out ketchup and they put ketchup on their grilled cheese and ever since that moment I've kind of really been disgusted by ketchup because the last thing I wanted after seeing my mom's chin gushing blood was a bunch of ketchup especially on a grilled cheese Ugh, what a waste so needless to say uh yeah ketchup was easy to give up but something very difficult to give up also tortilla chips and salsa especially when they're free at a restaurant I will try to not keep them in the house because I have to be very careful about my sodium intake got to keep the blood pressure down but it's not even about the blood pressure numbers it's about extra sodium makes me feel bloated but it's easier for me to give up wheat-based gluten-based stuff and harder for me to give up corn-based stuff which is corny I guess but who says you really have to give it up corn doesn't make me feel weird too much of anything will make any person feel weird right um sometimes for example there was a time recently where I was just eating a lot of packaged foods like the packaged popcorn even if it's like smart pop or you know slim and trim popcorn I can eat like 10 cups of that in one sitting just because it's low in calories doesn't mean you should do it because you have to balance that out with healthy food you know something um else that I won't give up on the note of corn is corn bread oh I'm gonna have a whole podcast episode just about cornbread because it's home it's nostalgia for me but I don't eat it every day maybe like four times a year so if you're eating something not that many times a year why do you have to give it up you don't but will your body maybe feel it later will your mind maybe feel it later if you're me yes and if you're some other people yes and some people do have to give things up very specifically for health reasons such as my dad is diabetic and he should probably be giving up a lot more food than he's already given up that's just me being judgmental and that's me just being Dr. Brooke but um on that note I had said how I gave up candy bars back in the day well I still do have to have my chocolate but I like like the healthier versions and they're not sponsoring this podcast and actually after today's very ADHD podcast they probably <laughs> will not want to sponsor me I'm joking is Jojo's they're my recent find I love Jojo's they're not necessarily sugar-free per se but they're lower in sugar and lower in all the added gunk they're delicious and Lily's Lily's is stevia based they're wonderful and Trader Joe's has a brand of their own low glycemic chocolate but it's not like chocolate chocolate I think it's called like a chocolate flavored do you hear Annie whining outside for me she's like well, oh she wants to come visit dogs can't have chocolate Annie so simply light is the Trader Joe's version but I try to do that one sparingly because then we're getting into eating a lot of chemicals and things like that so that's why I really like Jojo's and cleaner chocolates if you will I'll even sometimes make my own like chocolate bombs where I get like coconut oil or coconut butter and you know really good quality cocoa powder and a little bit of mushed up bananas or something and I freeze those bad boys boom and some comfort foods that I will not give up as we probably already know are dobosh cake king cake um I go back and forth about my feelings on king cake but if it's a like a Zulu king cake from back home or before bombs bakery back home closed down I can't I just can't give it up 
But again, I'm having this once or twice a year. So when I go back to Louisiana, I have to be very careful to not, like within a week, I know I might ha really feel like like utter garbage if I'm going to have dobash cake one day, a mufalada the next day, a beignet the next day. So I have to balance that out with kale and with salad and with lean proteins and things like that. Um, and again, it's not because I'm punishing myself. It's because I don't want to feel like garbage because I want to wake up in the morning and want to be able to go like, you know, run five miles. I don't run five miles every morning, but do you know what I mean? I want to feel like I could. Um, something else I won't give up um, as far as comfort food. I, I never say never to gumbo. I never say never to jambalaya. These are rice-based. Well, gumbo you could do without the rice, but it just is kind of nice to have gumbo with a dollop. A dollop of white rice or brown rice. Brown rice based jambalaya does not taste quite as good. And mama will get very, very ticked off if you ask her to make jambalaya with a brown rice base. But a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. There are healthier ways to make back home comfort foods. I just haven't found it out. I have found that secret out yet. And it's almost like... If I'm going to only eat jambalaya or gumbo four times a year, if that, why try to do the healthier version? Otherwise, I'll just eat my usual healthy repertoire, right? Biscuits are something else I will not give up. We know that. One of my very first episodes of this here podcast was about biscuits. Won't give them up. I just realize I might feel like junky the next day. So we keep talking about we, by we, I mean me, keep talking about oh, you know, it's it's about how you're feeling with your foods, how you're feeling, how you're feeling. But what about the weight? What about the calories? And again, I feel, I personally, I don't even feel, I feel and I know, for me at least, it is a lot easier to give up a food if you think about the way it's going to make you feel afterwards. Not as an oh my God, I just had chocolate cake. I feel so bad about myself. I have to go do, you know, um, 25 hours of hit and cardio and hit, I better hit the gym. No, it's not about that. It's about like, I just had four pieces of king cake. I'm going to feel pretty nasty tomorrow. And I really have a lot of things to do and my brain won't function properly. Now, there's a lot of diets as an elimination diets, an elimination principle kind of diets where they are essentially elimination based. What helped me lose weight and also recalibrate, ooh, that rhymed, lose weight, recalibrate my hormones was the South Beach diet. And it wasn't just about like, yes, we're giving these foods up so Brooke can lose weight. It was like, we're giving certain foods up so we can see where's my baseline. And with the South Beach diet, which is something I still condone because it's kind of a Mediterranean diet in principle, you give up pretty much all carbs for the first week or two and even sugars. So for the first week or two, you're basically eating lean protein and vegetables. That's it. Then you add in fruits slowly, and then you add in brown rices and things like that. So you basically have to go cold turkey for a while on the South Beach diet, but you can eat like hardly anything except for turkey. <laughs> That's like a little joke I had written in because I, I do have like a little um, cheat sheet that I follow. Today I'm not really following it, so that joke didn't really land. I apologize about that. Something else I also did as far as kind of an elimination diet, and it was more recent within the past uh, about five, six, oh, my stomach's growling, five or six years ago, was the paleo. And it was my acupuncturist, Joe, he's the bomb. Um, he's my former acupuncturist and only former because he moved away. My current acupuncturist now, Erin, she's the bomb too. I love these people. They have really helped me save my life essentially. And I don't say that lightly, but anyways, Joe had recommended I do paleo. And when he talked to me about it, he's like, I'm saying paleo. He's like, I don't mean you can go and like eat all these like paleo snacks, you know, cause there's like, oh, but this is technically paleo, but it's all like this prepackaged stuff. I almost said a cuss word. I try really hard not to cuss. Also things like, let's talk about dates again, dates and figs, love them. They're technically paleo. They got a lot of sugar. So it's like, if you're trying to eliminate your sugars, 
to lose weight or to feel less foggy or to regulate your hormones, don't go and replace your candy bar with something that has like five or six dates in it. That's a lot of dates for the day. I mean, could you go on five dates in a day? Probably not. I mean, I couldn't. I wouldn't want to. So why would you want to eat five dates and one candy bar? And one bar. I'm not dissing Lara Bar. You know, let's let's face the facts. Uh, we're talking about Lara Bar here. Lara Bars are wonderful, but when you are minding your sugars and how you feel initially with certain foods, and being that sugar is an inflammatory food, you just want to be careful with a lot of packaged things. Basically, you're getting back to as clean eating as possible. But then add in. Add in th those Lara bars later on. They're great for on the go. Add in my favorite. I love, and they're not sponsoring this. Add in the RX bars later on. But again, you have to kind of see where your basis is. Certain other things like we've talked about, I've given up. I've given up many substances, but one substance I've given up is coffee, is caffeinated coffee, especially hot coffee. So nowadays what I do, I make a cold brew with a little bit of decaf and a whole lot of chicory. And I love my chicory. It's got prebiotics, inulin, all that wonderful stuff. And, and back home, Louisiana, they cut a lot of their coffee with chicory. So Cafe Du Monde does it and uh, community coffee, they do it. I love my little concoction because for me, I just love the taste of coffee. But I have to be very careful about certain acidic foods because I have something else called... I can't pronounce it, intercital cystitis. I just, I see. It's basically where you feel like you have to pee all the time. So you have to watch out with your acidic foods. On that note, kombucha. I used to really love kombucha, but I've given it up because it's super acidic. So maybe I have kombucha once or twice, like every month. I actually had some today. That could explain also why I feel extra crazy. So needless to say, y'all, I appreciate y'all staying on this wild ride with me. I know it was a little bit more ADD than usual. It, it tends to be like when I talk about foods or something I'm very, very passionate about, I'm like kind of like a train wreck, train wreck. And that was kind of like that today. But something I, I want to leave all of us with is why do we have to look at giving up a food as we're it's like a punishment. Like for Lent, we're giving something up. Hey, I'm not a devout Catholic. My mom was kicked out of the Catholic Church. I mean, if you, I'm not dissing Catholics. What I'm saying is don't give up something as if it's a punishment. Give up a food or a substance as in, oh, giving up coffee helps me be free from anxiety or it helps me be free from going to the bathroom all the time or giving up gluten helps with my mental fog or giving up fried fish helps with my back knee. Um, sidebar, I never had back knee. Um, but focusing on giving something up for the positive because it brings something joyful to you. Oh, I think it's like kind of like Marie Kondoing your food. And on that note, if y'all hear the scratching in the back... That's Annie making her nest, and that is time for me to go. Thanks so much for listening, y'all. It is my hope to inspire, uplift, and entertain you with this Who's Dat Fat Girl podcast. So if you're hungry for more, you can book me to speak or perform my solo show that inspired this podcast, Fat Girl Costumes, written by yours truly and directed by Brian Lady at your virtual or in-person event please visit brookhoover.com slash fluffybuttproductions or email me at contactbrookhoover at gmail.com for more info. And let's follow each other on Instagram. I'm at brookhoover. And the O's in my name are not the letter O. They're zeros. Not because I want to be a size zero, but because I guess I'm just so clever with my late 90s Yahoo self. And if you like this podcast, which I really hope you do, please give me a five-star rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts. And most importantly, share this with your friends, family, and other people you may know who are as fat as we are. That's fat with a PH.